Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston presents Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast stretches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are on Venus on a farm where food is chemically grown in large tanks. As they walk toward a building where Tonga is held captive, huge sun mirrors atop several tall towers turn ominously toward them. Smoke and rockets, Commander. It's really getting hot all of a sudden. Yes, waves of heat. Even for Venus, this is unusual. Gee, my eyes. What a glare. Don't look at those reflectors. They'll blind you. <laughs> Let's run for the building and get out of the sun. Happy, look out. They're focusing those sun mirrors on us. A whole battery of them are pointed right toward us. Then we can dodge them. Run back this way. Commander, they've got us surrounded by the heat beams, and they're closing in. If they hit us with all of them at once. We're finished. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Space Shark. It's the serial of the future, the real space serial. The serial that's different from any other serial in the universe. The serial you see on Commander Corey's own breakfast table. Delicious rice checks. The cereal with a flavor like no other flavor in all the universe. Delicious rice checks. Swell tasting shredded rice spun in that modern bite sized design for easy eating. A real space cereal. You see, there's space inside those biscuits so they can fill up with milk or cream. Try it today, gang. The only bite sized rice cereal in the universe. Rice checks. The one and only official checkerboard rice cereal. Rice checks. One of the super cereals that helped us supercharge you. Rice checks at your grocer's in the red and white checkerboard package. Get it today. Crisp and delicious. New and different. Golden bite size rice checks. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have just blasted off from the planet Saturn, where they've been investigating mysterious contamination of chemically grown food shipped from Venus. In the meantime, Tonga, the assistant security chief, is also doing some undercover investigation work on Venus, working as a chemist on one of the farms. Now, through the nose port of Terra 5, Buzz and Happy watch Saturn's shining rings looming up large before them. Raise our vector about five degrees, Happy. Want to clear the rings with plenty of space to spare. Yes, sir. You know, it's too bad anything so beautiful is such a menace to space flight. But by the time you're close enough for them to be a menace, the rings are no longer beautiful. No, because you can see the individual hunks of rock making up the rings. And yet from a distance, they look as though you could ride a surface car around them like on a smooth racetrack. Mm -hmm. Only in this case, it's the racetrack that does the moving. Well, it's 1,100 hours universal star time, Happy. We ought to be hearing from Tonga pretty soon. I hope she found out more about how that food is getting contaminated than we did. Well, those samples we examined on Saturn turned bad after they arrived from Venus. So maybe the chemical farm they came from is still pure, huh? well, Not necessarily. Perhaps a chemical with a delayed action was put into the hydroponic tanks. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Tonga calling Commander Corey. Corey here. Go ahead, Tonga. Commander... How soon can you come to Venus? We just blasted off from Saturn. It'll take at least three and a half hours. Something wrong? Why, no, to the contrary. I found out how those harmful chemicals are getting into the hydroponic tanks. Good. A group of racketeers are trying to force the farm operators to pay for protection. They bribe workers to put the contaminating chemicals into the tanks. Then, for the owners who pay the price, the tanks stay pure. Who's behind this gang? I don't know yet, Commander, but I think I will by the time you reach Venus. Where are you now? In the woman's dormitory at the farm. I'm just about ready to report for work at the lab. If you leave your miniature spacer phone in your room, be sure you hide it carefully. I keep it with me, Commander. It's safer. You want us to come directly to the farm when we reach Venus? I'll let you know later, Commander. By the way, I'm working here as Miss Bird. All right, Tonga. Be careful. Corey out. Gee, Commander, Tonga seems to have found out more in a week than all the other agents have in a month. She's a good security department operator, Happy. No, we'll clear the rings. Change vector for Venus. Yes, sir. Ready for the spectroscope check on specimen 28, Mr. Baxter? All right, Miss Williams. Hmm, negative. Well, this whole group of samples tests pure. I hope we have as good luck in the next group. Oh, never mind that now, Miss Burns. I'll handle it. 
Oh, but I thought you wanted all these samples analyzed before the morning shift ends. There isn't much more to do. I, uh, I'd like to have you take this report over to the superintendent's office. Why, yes, Mr. Baxter. Come in, Eagle. Where is she? I sent her on an errand. All right, that space patrol spy. I wonder how much she knows. Not very much. I've kept close watch on her ever since we found that she's a space patrol agent. But that was three days ago. She's been here a week. I'd like to know where she kept that space for. I've had a room search at the woman's dormitory. She's got it hidden, all right. Perhaps it's under the floor. Baxter, you should have put that concealed microphone in her room in the first day she was here. Look, I can't handle everything. Oh, we got to get rid of her without exciting suspicion. How can we do that? The space patrol would investigate. Mm -hmm. Supposing there was an accident. Supposing she mixed the wrong chemicals and there was an explosion. Oh, she's too careful. Too smart. I, I've got it. This will do fine. Uh, what is that? A harmless chemical used by Miss Burns almost constantly. But this bottle... Someone might easily confuse the names of the two chemicals. They're very much alike. Mm. What does this chemical do? A few drops mixed with any acid solution will produce a deadly gas. A gas that soon dissipates. After a few seconds, when it's mixed with air, it's harmless. Mm. But if someone were leaning over a container of it when it first formed... Mm. Baxter, I can pronounce the name of this substance, but it's the solution to our problem. Fix it up. i better get out of here before she gets back. The superintendent said he'd check the report later, Mr. Baxter. <laughs> Typical. He hollers his head off or something, then lets it sit on his desk for three days. Miss Burns, would you take over here? Of course. I've got to rush over to tank number five. I'll be back as soon as possible. Right, Mr. Baxter. Mm. Now, let's see. An etheric acid, 20 cc's. Oh, now where's the... Oh, here it is. <coughs> oh, oh. <coughs> it worked, Eagle. Is the gas dissipated? Do you think I'd be walking around like this if it hadn't? As I told you, it only takes a few seconds for the... Baxter, she's alive. Huh? Look at her. She's moving, tugging at her throat. She must have jerked her head back before it got into her lungs. Now what do we do? This makes it awkward. Let me think a minute. Well, at this acceleration, we'll reach Venus in half an hour, sir. Want me to take over? <laughs> no, thanks, sir. I'd just as soon bring her in, if I may. Well, fine with me. Oh. Happy. Listen, I, I heard something in a miniature space of phone. Well, so did I. I got it, Baxter. We'll load our Miss Burns into the surface car and take her to my hyperdramic farm. Huh? So somebody sees us. Tell them there was a slight accident. We can say I'm a doctor. Take her to a hospital. But, Commander, they've done something to Tonga. Quiet, Happy. I take her to your farm. When she comes to, we can make her tell how much she knows. We certainly can't work on her hair. That's right, Abel. I'll stay here and watch Miss Burns. We got to get a surface car. Go on, get moving. Tonga managed to click on her space of phone, so she's probably not too badly hurt. I wish they'd keep talking so we could find out who they are and where they're going to take her. Baxter and Eagle. Eagle has a chemical food farm. Happy you keep listening to your miniature set. I'll contact Venus Space Control and have them check on the location of a hydroponic farm owned by a man named Eagle. Our well, passenger seems to be very quiet back there. Well, apparently that gas just missed being totally effective. Here, pull up in front of this building. What's this place? A mm, couple of storage rooms and a solar mirror control. Quite a layout you have. Yeah, uh, very successful farm, Baxter. And you know, I haven't had a bit of trouble with contaminated food. I wonder why. I wonder why. Oh, come to think of it, maybe I'd better have some trouble. 
in case the space patrol starts wondering why. Well, come on. Let's get her out of the car. She's still unconscious. We'll have to carry her. Yeah, all right. Let's go. <clears throat> Spaceship. It's landing. Quick, get her inside. It's a space patrol ship. Why do you suppose it's coming here? It's the commander ship. I've seen it a dozen of times on Terra. He must know the whole deal. How could he? Ah, the girl tipped him off. Probably has been waiting for days for some open move on our part. Uh, what do we do with her? Where's one of those storage rooms? Oh, wait. There isn't time for that now. Bring her in here. We got to stop Corey. Stop him? How? Uh, set her down here. Look, why don't we lock her up out of sight? Maybe we can bluff Corey out of it. He can't know anything. Well, he's obviously been to the other farm. And knows the girl was taken away in a surface car. Uh, nobody asked us any questions? Uh, no, but several people saw us. Why don't we get in the car again and get away from here? And be followed by Corey's spaceship? I'm not anxious to tangle with Corey. We won't have to. Come here. I'll show you something that will take care of Corey. Commander, I'm not sure, but I thought I saw two men carrying Tonga into that building down there uh, when we were landing the ship. That means she's still unconscious. Yes, we've got to be careful, Happy. It's lucky she managed to turn on her miniature space phone. And even when Eagle and Baxter weren't talking, you picked up the sound of the surface car motor and led us right here. This farm is more than just a front. Looks like a well-run operation. Well, then why does Milton Eagle get mixed up in a gang of racketeers? Well, very likely he's one of the higher-ups, if not the kingpin. This protection racket is his way of controlling competition. Well, what are those big, shiny pieces of metal on top of the towers? Those are solar mirrors, Happy. They can be focused on the food tanks to raise the temperature. Well, some of them seem to be moving now. Uh, they have to keep pace with the sun. Also, if the mirrors were kept focused on one tank too long, it would scorch the plants, probably boil the water. Oh, I see. I'm not so sure our rival hasn't aroused interest, Happy, so be on your guard. Get the idea now, Baxter? I'm surrounding Corey and the cadet with circles of concentrated sunlight. What do you expect to do? Blind them with the glare? Yeah. Wait till I converge all those beams in one spot. Right on Corey and his friend. Hegel. Well, you, you realize the heat those mirrors put out? <laughs> yeah, quite well, Baxter. And I think this will serve to stop the space patrol permanently. Now watch. I'm going to bring the focal points together. Gee, Commander, sure is getting hot all of a sudden. Yes, waves of heat. Even for Venus, this is unusual. Smoking like it's my eyes. What a glare. Don't look at those reflectors. They'll blind you. Hey, hey, let's run for the building and get out of the sun. Happy, they're focusing those sun mirrors on us. The whole battery of them. Maybe we can dodge them. Run back this way. Hey, Commander, we're surrounded by heat beams, and they're closing in. They hit us with all those at once. We're finished. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Right now, here's the story of a cosmic surface car in trouble. Listen. The trouble? Nothing to go on but ordinary fuel. You hear that? The driver's filling up the tank with super fuel. Now, something's going to happen now. Boy, that cosmic surface car is really roaring now. That's because it's supercharged with super fuel. And the same is true with you, gang. What happens when you don't have a good breakfast? You're just a putt-putt. But when you fill up your tank with super fuel, man, you're supercharged. Now, here's how Buzz Corey does it. He eats a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal. Rice checks or wheat checks. Wait till you taste them, gang. Boy, are they good. Flavor galore in every crisp, bite-sized biscuit. So get going, gang. Eat a good super cereal breakfast and get supercharged. Get the super cereals today. Rice checks, wheat checks. Buzz and Happy are on the grounds of a chemically grown food plant on Venus in an attempt to rescue Tonga, abducted by two men who've been putting poisonous chemicals in the food tanks of competing operators. The two conspirators, Milton Eagle and Richard Baxter, have seen Buzz and Happy approach the building where they're holding Tonga. Eagle has focused several sun mirrors toward the two space patrolmen, surrounding them with heat beams. Inch by inch, the circles close in around Buzz and Happy as Eagle tightens the wall of searing heat. 
Look at them, Baxter. <laughs> they can't move in any direction. Grass all around them is burning. <laughs> yeah. And a few seconds ago, it was fresh and green. That must be stifling inside those beams. Look at them. Even from here, you can tell they're gasping for air. Well, we might as well finish them off. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, grab her, Baxter. Let, let go of me. Get your hands off of that panel. Pull her away, Baxter. I'm trying to. Let go of me. Found you come away. Let go of me. <sighs> I've got her, Eagle. Now I'll finish off Corian. Uh, she cut off the beam. Get them on, quickly. There isn't time. Corey and the cadet are headed toward us. Drag the girl out to the surface car. Quick. Quit struggling, dear. Take your hands off me. Uh, we haven't got time to pamper you, Miss Burns. <laughs> there. Uh, now you can carry her. And hurry up into the car. They're getting into the surface car. They've got Tonga. Hurry up. Stop. Hey, come back here. <laughs> No use, Hat. Doggone it. A few more steps and we'd have made it. Back to the ship. We'll blast off and trace them. They won't be able to get far. It was close. Huh? Plenty close. We aren't away yet. They'll look for us with their ship. Maybe put up a roadblock. Found a girl. Why don't we get rid of her for good? Throw her out of the car. No, you fool. As long as she's with us, Corey won't get robbed. Where, where are you taking me? That's a good question. Where are we taking her? Uh, we're going to blast off for Neptune. Blasting off for Neptune? In the surface car? You must really have knocked your silly angle. <laughs> I got a spaceship in a private spaceport a couple of miles from here. With a little luck, we can blast off before Corey spots us. With a little luck, I think we I've can got him, sir, on the miniature set. Yeah, that's them all. Right. Where on Neptune are you taking me? Place where the space patrol will never find you. I suppose you've got a hideout in the mountains somewhere. No, not quite. There's a small settlement along the Crawlog River, just about 60 views east of Neptune City, where we won't be found. Wouldn't a big city be better? People wouldn't ask so many questions. I know what I'm doing. Well, we know where they're going to take her. Hope we can rescue Tonga before they get her aboard the spaceship. Hey, Commander, there's a surface car down there on the highway. Do you suppose that's the one? Very likely. Let's cut down our speed. The spaceport isn't much further, Baxter. What kind of spaceship do you have? Mine, such an inquisitive woman. But I'll tell you, I'm rather proud of it. It's a Class B space cruiser, one of the largest private ships made. A Class B space cruiser? How nice. It must be Venus Registry, then. Yes, Venus Registry. Anything else you want to know? Hegel, we're being followed. Uh, by a surface car? Uh, none showing on a highway radar. No, a spaceship is pretty high up, but it's hovering. There's some binoculars in the compartment. See if you can make out what ship it is. All right. I don't like the looks of it. Why would a spaceship be traveling so slowly over this part of Venus? Uh, it's changing direction now. I can get these glasses, folks. It's a space patrol ship, Terra 5. Corey again. Uh, maybe he didn't see us after all. Uh, there were other surface cars on a highway near my farm. Wonder how we happened to follow this one. That's strange. Miss Burns, why do you keep playing with that locket? Why, I... I didn't know I was. Give me that. There you are. Oh, rather large for a locket, isn't it? Snap it open. Uh, now, isn't this interesting? What is it, Baxter? A miniature space phone. So that's how Corey's been able to find us. We really ought to fix this girl now. Shut up, you fool. Turn that space phone off. Just a minute, Eagle. I know where you are and what you're up to. If either you or Baxter harm Tonga, both of you will regret it the rest of your lives. Our serial name is Tonga, the assistant security chief. That's right. Corey, I, I got a proposition to make to you. What is it? If we turn Tonga loose, will you let us alone? You know I couldn't make a bargain like that. Well, I'm willing to take a gamble, Corey. I know you'll keep after us, but I'll trade Tonga for a few minutes' time. There's a small check a few hundred yards down the highway. I'll leave Tonga there. How about it, Corey? It's your best chance to get her back safely. All right, Eagle. I'll get you anyway, but I warn you, don't try to double-cross me. Hey, cut the space phone off, Baxter. It's off. Uh, here's the shack. We got to work fast. Corey's landing right where I figured he would. Stay behind the trees until he's out of the ship. Why don't we get in the car and get to your ship? Why waste time? While Corey is in the shack rescuing Tonga, we'll put his weapons out of commission. Why not wreck the control so he can't blast off? Yeah, uh, and have him alert other space patrol units? Our best bet is to have Corey after us himself. 
tell me your ship is faster than Terra 5. No, but his ship isn't faster than the shark. The shark? Yeah, that's a cosmic missile with a special view scope device. I have one aboard my ship. And once it's launched at Corey's ship, he can dodge it or outrun it. Yes, and with his own cosmic weapons out of commission, he can't fire at the shark. That's right. He can run all over the solar system. But sooner or later, the shark will get him. Come on, get ready. Corey and the cadet are getting out of the ship. Here's the shack, sir. I sure hope they kept their word and left Tonga here. Eagle and Baxter are putting a lot of faith in a few minutes' head start. But it won't do them much good. Try the door, Hal. Thanks. Commander, happy. Are you all right, Tonga? Yes, Commander. Well, they've got her tied, hand and foot. I have to give them more time. They probably would have locked the door if they could. Here, I'll cut those ropes, Tonga. Thank you, Commander. I tried to find out exactly where Eagle's spaceship was. All I know is that it's not too far from here. Happy and I looked for it from the air, but it must have been hidden. Hey, this... the ship blasting off. Probably Eagle's. Let's see. By the time we walk through the woods back to our ship, well, they'll have about five minutes start on us. Five minutes? Well, that isn't going to do them much good. They picked us up, Eagle. Good. Now let's give Corey a run for his money. When are you going to launch the guided missiles at them? We'll wait till they get closer. First, we leave Cory out of the regular lane. I don't want him to call for help when we launch the shark. We aren't gaining very fast, sir. They must realize they can't escape. Turn on the space phone, Happy. I'll order them to surrender. Commander Cory aboard Terra 5 to Milton Eagle aboard Private Cruiser 398. Come in. Eagle to Commander Corey. Is something wrong, Commander? Eagle, the smartest thing you can do is surrender. Head for Saturn. It's the closest planet. Sorry. We have other plans. I order you to surrender. We're armed, you know. Oh, of course. Happy, stand by to fire a warning rocket. Yes, sir. Eagle, I don't want to use force unless it's necessary, but I'm prepared to do it. Commander, something's wrong with the firing mechanism. What? The electronic controls are out of order. What about number two? Well, they're all out of order, sir. That's right, Commander. Baxter and I took care of that while you were rescuing Tonga. We can still overtake you, Eagle. Meanwhile, we can call units from Saturn. You're going to be pretty busy, Commander. Baxter and I are sending you a present. Catch. Eagle, if you fire on a space patrol ship, you'll be blasted out of space. Commander, look at the view scope. Something's leaving their ship. It's not a regular missile, sir. It's too slow. It may seem slow now, Cadet, but wait. Eagle, what did you just release? A weapon with your picture on it, Commander. It's gaining velocity, sir. It's a guided type missile with a cosmic warhead. Have fun. Eagle out. Happy. Change vector for Saturn. For Saturn, sir? Yes, and put on all of the acceleration we can stand. Getting closer, Commander. Head for Saturn's rings, Happy. For the rings? Yes. Get on a tangent with the outer ring. All right, sir, but... Well, Commander... Yes, sir. The rings are made up of big chunks of rock. If we get too close... That's the we... idea, Tonga. We'll get as close as possible. We're going to let those rocks run interference for us. What an idea. Just like football at technology school. Uh, blocking back, trailing you. Tonga, Commander. bring the forward view scope up to full sensitivity. We'll pick out a nice big rock. Yes, Commander. Missile's awfully close, sir. At this rate, it'll hit us in a few seconds. There's a giant hunk of rock dead ahead. Good. I'll hit the controls now, Happy. I'm going to see how close I can come to that rock. Tonga, watch the rear view scope. The missile's awfully close. Fine. We're going to jaywalk right in front of that rock. <gasps> wow. Oh, boy, was that close. Smoking rockets, have you ever seen such fine? Watch the rear view scope. The rock. It blew up right behind us. The guided missile hit it. Oh, that was luck. Luck? Nothing. That was the trickiest spaceship piloting in the universe, Commander. You hit a guided missile with an unguided missile. Now, let's take care of some unfinished business. Eagle and Baxter. How are we going to find them now? I don't think it'll be difficult. They figure we're out of the way, so they might go back to their original plan. The Crawlock River place? We'll try it. Take over, Happy. We're clear of the ring. Well, I lined up another ship for us, Baxter. Good. When do we leave Krolak? In a few hours. One of my men is bringing a ship in from Neptune City. Well, it can't be too soon to suit me. I don't like this place. Ah, what are you so jittery about? We don't have to worry about Corey anymore. I know. I just don't like Neptune. I'm used to Venus. You get plenty of sunshine. Get your hands up, Eagle. You right. too, Baxter. Don't worry. Get the weapons, Happy. Yes, sir. 
Uh, Corey, uh, how did you... The guided missile, you, you couldn't have escaped the shark. The shark, if that's what you call it, stubbed its nose on a rock just off Saturn. As a pet, it wasn't too trustworthy. You were so sure you'd finished, Corey, I told you not to come here. No, nah, no, nah, Baxter. No recrimination. We gambled and we lost. Take it easy, Baxter. Like me. No, you don't, Ego. <laughs> Now, Ego. Are you ready to come along? Yeah. Uh, sure. Oh, okay, Corey. I'll come along. Yeah. You know, uh, you're not very agile, Ego. Uh, you'd better stick to taking it easy, like Baxter. <laughs> An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol story in just a moment. Hey, watch out. Hold everything. Here he comes down the rink so fast his ice skates are melting the ice. Wow, that's a checkerboard kid. He's supercharged. And a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal did it. A breakfast with swell-tasting instant Ralston. Uh-oh, here he comes again. Stand back. <whistles> Jumpin' Jupiter, that boy's a winner. He's got the speed of Buzz Corey himself. And how about you, gang? How about getting supercharged so you can whiz along just like that? Just do this. Have a good breakfast with Instant Ralston, the hot super cereal. The delicious hot cereal that helps to turn on your starter. Makes you bright as a light and helps to keep you right on the beam. That's what it does for the commander. That's what it'll do for you. Uh-oh, here comes the checkerboard kid again on those flying ice skates. <whistles> Don't wait, gang. Be a winner yourself. Get supercharged. Eat a good breakfast with a delicious hot super cereal, Instant Ralston. <laughs> And now for a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy and their spacesuits on a tiny asteroid are approaching a criminal who has stolen evidence that's needed to convict a crime syndicate. He's got the metal box, sir, with the evidence. All right, Chora. Come out of that crater and get into our ship. I'm getting into my own ship, Corey, and you're not going to stop me. All right, we'll come down and get you. Take one more step and I'll use this gun on you. All right, have it your way. I warned you. Drop, Happy. Uh Wow, that was close. The gun chipped a hunk of rock loose as big as your head. Stand still, Happy. I think Chora means business. Yeah, he does. And it isn't funny business, either. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Search for Asteroid X, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! <laughs> And now, an important message from Commander Buzz Corey. Did you ever read in the paper about a boy or girl saving somebody's life? Ever wish you could do something like that? Well, you can. Just join my Space Patrol blood boosters. Now, here's what we do. We try to get more people to donate blood to the Red Cross. When you get somebody to donate blood, you save a life. So, boys and girls, join my Space Patrol blood boosters today. <laughs> Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Nina Berra. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! <laughs> and be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time.